Hello, David here. In this video, we will introduce you to the different types of components in the e-catalog that you will need while designing layouts using process modeling in visual components. We start in the process tab with the cell graph open on the left. When loading a layout, if all folders in the cell graph are expanded, you can use the controls in the upper left corner of the panel to collapse them. And let's use the F11 key to switch to full screen mode to examine this example layout. We have mobile robots moving in this area, transporting parts from these stations to these stations. We have a robot arm working in this area and there is also a machine. We have manual workstations here for human operators. We have conveyors and we have a storage system for ready-made products. And using the F11 key to move out of full screen mode, let's see what type of components we have used from the e-catalog to create such a layout and such a production flow. A typical starting point when creating a layout is to create the basic flow. If we select the e-catalog panel from the lower left corner and expand models by type, we can find PM flow components. If we want a closer look at what is available here, we can modify the icon size and drag the panel to the right. With these components, you can create new products in the layout with feeders. You can define certain process locations with a process node or an inline process component. You can also find a manual workstation here. And there is also a sync process, which is the end location of the products in the simulation scope. These simple looking components can also be attached together with conveyors. If we go to the cell graph panel, we can find the PM flow components we are using in this layout. And selecting the folder name in the cell graph panel will highlight all the PM flow components used in the layout, like these manual workstations and certain interesting process locations. The process nodes in this terminals folder are also from PM flow components, but in this layout, they are just recategorized under terminals. If we zoom into this manual work area where the human operators are doing assembly work and we enable the flow editor from the process tab ribbon above, we can see the transport links, which define how products should move from one process to another. And we can see the human icon there. And this transport link is associated with this human transport controller, which is associated with these human resources. And notice how, if we select the human transport controller in the layout, that its location in the cell graph on the left will be highlighted, and the folder it is in, in this example, PM transport controllers, will expand. And we see that we have multiple human transport controllers in use in this layout. Or if we do the opposite and click on any of these components in the cell graph, we can see its location in the layout. And double clicking on it will zoom the camera to that component. If we then move to the e catalog, we can find PM transport controllers, which contains the human transport controller. And under PM resources, we can find human resources. In this neighboring cell in the layout, we can see humans lifting the ready-made chair using the lift assist component, which can be found under PM tools, which contains a list of utilities that human operators can use. Returning to the cell graph panel, other transport controllers in this layout are the multiple human transport controllers we referred to earlier, which are in different areas of work in this layout. There's a human operator there, which has its own human transport controller, and human operators here, which also have their own controller. There is also a robot transport controller in this area of the layout, and on top of the robot transport controller is a robot. In the e-catalog, like the human transport controller, the robot transport controller is also in PM transport controllers. And you can use this controller together with any of the robots in this category. 
and returning to the cell graph for this layout and to PM transport controllers. There's also a single rail transport controller, which is controlling this stacker crane from PM cranes in the cell graph. And in the e-catalog, you can find that under PM cranes. And its transport controller is also under PM transport controllers, where there are both dual and single rail transport controllers. And together with the stacker crane and the single rail transport controller, PM warehousing components are being used. And returning to the cell graph again, there is a PM warehousing folder. And these warehouse shelves are from there. Also, the pallet feeder is from that category. And the warehouse process shelves in this area of the layout are also from that category. There is also a mobile robot transport controller from PM transport controllers used in this layout. And that is controlling these two mobile robots from PM mobile robots. Mobile robots and human operators also utilize PM navigation components, which is mostly in this example, these pathway areas on the floor, which are like a road system that the mobile robots can use while moving around. In PM navigation in the e-catalog, you can also find an idle location where a human or mobile robot should go when they don't have anything to do. You can also find these components that you can use to create certain capacity and traffic rules, together with pathway areas, either square or curved. One category still worth mentioning, even though it's not specifically a process modeling category, but often used is conveyors. Like in this layout, we have a simple conveyor here, and it's working together with these process node components. Or like in here, we have an overhead conveyor system and there are process locations here and here for loading and unloading. And finally, there's one machine here, which is a specific process point in the process modeling context. It has its own ready-made process definition for a work cycle and such. And there are plenty of machines in the e-catalog which will work together with the process modeling system. And this concludes the lesson. Thank you for watching.